who are stakeholders. Hi, I'm Eldrick Tinkatoya. Thank you very much for watching this video. Stakeholders is a very common term that is used over and over again in the news, in public affairs, in public policy, um, in many conversations, especially when you're involving community, a community or a group of people. Before I go into the definition of or what it means, uh, what stakeholder means, it's basically a play of word. It originates or it is often related to the term shareholder. Now, in a listed company or in a company limited by share, a share basically shows or represents ownership within the company. So a shareholder or multiple shareholder, a company can be owned by one or two more individual or organizations so that ownership is a share they own a share in that company and they are known as shareholders what about stakeholders stakeholders refer to the people or organizations that affect the success of a given organization or individual. In the case of public relations, public affairs, or corporate uh, administration, stakeholders usually refer to individuals and organizations that can determine their success. Stakeholders, unlike shareholders, don't necessarily own the company. Shareholders are a form, if you will, of stakeholders because the shareholders have an interest, a vested financial interest within the organization that they own. But there are other uh, stakeholders as well. I would like you to imagine a simple pharmacy that you can find down the road. Okay. There are multiple stakeholders involved, two types or two broad categories. You have the internal stakeholders and you have the external stakeholders. Internal stakeholders refer to stakeholders who have interest and are within the company. Who are these people? Internal stakeholders for that pharmacy would definitely include whoever is working in the pharmacy. It could be the pharmacist if the pharmacist is not the owner. It could be the shop assistants there who helps clean up and key uh, the employees basically, who helps run the pharmacy to ensure that things go smoothly operationally. These are internal. Then you have also probably the owner. The owner of the whole pharmacy could be a shareholder. Now, when you're talking about a publicly traded company, the shareholder will be external shareholders rather than internal shareholders. So publicly listed companies, the internal uh, stakeholder would of, again be the management, the internal management, the employees. What about external stakeholders? Coming back to that pharmacy again. Pharmacies are regulated by law. Not anyone can just open up a pharmacy without complying to regulatory requirements. It's as simple as having a business license followed by a pharmacist license. Then and only then. If the owner doesn't have a pharmacist license, they would require the dispensation to be done by a licensed or a registered pharmacist, which complies with the law. Therefore, with that given example, the external stakeholder first would include regulatory authorities. The local council, the local government, the state government or the federal government as the case may be. It could be the regulatory body. So construction companies, for instance, you can include, uh, you know, if you're referring to the engineer, they are professional bodies, right? That is an example one group of external stakeholders, regulators. The next part, of course, obviously, would be the customers. People who frequent the pharmacy are stakeholders. They have an interest within the success and they can determine and impact the success of the particular pharmacy, the business. 
if they don't like that particular pharmacy, they can talk and they can complain within the community. So customers. Then I went to a third example of external uh, stakeholder, the community. The community in which that pharmacy operates or the business operates. That is why you notice many companies, many corporations, entities engage in what's called a corporate social responsibility program, a CSR program, a give back to community program. Because as corporate citizens, a corporate, yeah, a corporate citizen of sorts, doing business within the community, it's natural to give back, to build that bond. Another form of external stakeholder which many often overlook are the suppliers the pharmacy that i gave that we're talking about here surely needs suppliers it could be the pharmaceutical company it could be the fmcg company supplying the shampoo it could be uh, the aircon service repairman these are external stakeholders, again, suppliers. Why? Without, I mean, what is a pharmacy with a pharmacist without medication or pharmaceutical goods? What is a pharmacy with all this manpower and resources but nothing to sell, right? So these are examples of uh, the, the stakeholders, internal and external. And as you go, the bigger the organization, the more complex the dynamics of stakeholders can be. Uh, in, in, at a larger scale, it could involve politicians, for example, policymakers. It can involve the lawmakers. Lawmakers, policymakers, please, distingu uh, please distinguish the two. I'll do that in another video. Um, we also have MPs, members of parliament or members of Congress representing your local area. You can in, you, it could also involve non-government organizations, for example, consumer groups, uh, action groups or interest groups. It could involve um, religious groups as well. So these are different stakeholders. The question is, how would an organization, how would a business, how would you manage and balance the interests of the competing stakeholders. Let me give you one example of a conflict. To ensure that shareholders are happy with regular distribution or dividends, it is imperative for the management of any business to keep costs low while increase revenue. Okay? Keep costs low and increase revenue. In order to do that, sometimes Cost-cutting occurs. Cost-cutting could translate into number one, change of suppliers. Number two, change of volume order, which impacts the suppliers, again, the supply chain. It could also translate into changing the way things are done within the organization, therefore enlisting technology, reducing manpower. Okay, internal stakeholder being eliminated. Okay, you're talking about sacking or uh, or uh, downsizing and it's happened so you're trying to balance the interest of your stakeholder your internal stakeholder the employees and the external stakeholder the shareholders so how do you do that sometimes it's not always as simple as can be because different interest groups different stakeholders represent different interests different functions and influences the success of that organization differently. If it is a just cause, for example, the economy has been so bad that no matter what can, I mean, uh, downsizing is inevitable, but for mega corporations, MNCs, large organizations, massive downsizing would attract not only the interests of the unions, it would attract the interest of the uh, policy makers and regulators because the last thing that a country needs are more news of downsizing and retrenchment. So how, but at the same time, the corporations have to balance the interest and the need of the shareholders and the management. So how do we go about it? So that is never a clear cut solution. There's never a clear cut solution to that. So it's about managing and balancing when it comes to stakeholders. Problems can be solved, but 
polarities, multiple polarities, needs to be balanced and managed well. So that basically stakeholders. If you have any questions, feel free to drop down in the comment section down below. I do appreciate if you could share, like, and subscribe to the channel or to the page. Uh, thank you very much for watching. You just watch a video on what are stakeholders.